Good Noontide, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii on the last day of February 2022. And what could be more fascinating than materials science? Actually, we don't affiliate Hawaii with material science much. That's something for the huge universities, except materials science is coming to a university near us very soon. As a matter of fact, it's already here. And to talk about this is Presmic Dara, PhD, Goodwin Sierra, PhD, Fei Furutomo, PhD. We almost have an academic almost. Of speakers here today. And before I let them launch, and launch they will, I want to point out that material science, as I see it, can relate directly to energy efficiency in Hawaii, because in my mind, as you developed new materials, say for building components or for machinery, you are putting in, generally speaking, less energy into that component. And lo and behold, we might even be able to manufacture some of them here in a way, this is down the road, creating some very, very nice paying jobs and contributing to Hawaii as a science center. So on that very cheery note, we got lots, oh, now, Dara, what, or uh, Presmec, why don't you introduce the, the specialties of yourself and your guests, and then we will launch away into the real material here. Take it away, Presmec. Sounds very good. Aloha, Howard, and thank you so much for inviting us for this uh, interview. We are all very excited to, to share the news about this project and talk to you a little bit about uh, the topic of material science. Uh, my name is Shamek Dera. I'm a professor of mineral physics and uh, material science at the University of Hawaii. And my colleagues are Godwin Severa. Uh, Godwin is a chemist by training. He works at the Hawaii Institute of uh, um, Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. And uh, Faye is our educational uh, and online content uh, specialist who develops wonderful uh, tools for students to participate in our projects. So I think if it's okay with you, uh, Godwin is the principal investigator of this project. And uh, I think he would be happy to uh, explain the concept and framework of, uh, of this new initiative at UH. Yeah. And then Godwin, when you need a slide, just say uh, next slide, please. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Howard. So I think we should uh, move to the first or uh, first slide. So today, um, I'll, I'll take you uh, a bit on a drive. Um, so the University of Hawaii is uh, an interest in developing uh, material science. Uh, year and uh, this interest began uh, by um, when the vice chancellor of research uh, funded an internal grant on um, a material science uh, uh, research uh, and education consortium, uh, which put, brought together about fifteen uh, faculty to collaborate within the university, was providing undergraduate um, uh, but students. Uh, uh, research um, uh, research facilities. So besides that consortium, the university has also invested in two uh, uh, buildings for interdisciplinary collaborative uh, research. And we also have state-of-the-art uh, X-ray diffraction um, uh, facility as well that uh, Dr. Dara runs, as well as a microscopy facility here at the School of uh, ocean and its uh, science and technology. So really this project that we are talking to you about today uh, really started from that. That collaboration that brought us all together as uh, uh, material scientists to, uh, to think further in that. So, and uh, the, the reason why we decided to partner with the University of uh, Washington, I know we are, you know, Universities of Washington is very close to us and uh, 
uh, geog geograph geographically. And uh, we also have a lot of students that go to uh, University of Washington from Hawaii. But the most important thing was the synergy that we have uh, with the University of uh, Washington in terms of uh, instrumentation, in terms of uh, the research uh, that we do. And um, uh, for instance, uh, the University of Washington program that we partnered with is called um, uh, MEMSI. It's a, it's, a, it's a big center that's been funded by NSF um, uh, Materials uh, Research Science and Engineering Center. And this center that's at University of Washington has about 26 faculty. It's a big research uh, faculty, uh, big research initiative focused on material science. And they have about 30 graduate students uh, graduate students and uh, five undergraduate students. Uh, these were the numbers by at the end of uh, 2020. So they really, we could really learn a lot by partnering uh, with this uh, institute, with this uh, uh, center, because besides, you know, the synergy that we have in materials, we could also learn about how to run our own center here at uh, uh, University of Hawaii. We are in Arawan Institute, in uh, Arawan University. So we really have the facilities and the expertise to perform high quality and quantifiable research at the highest level. So we are hoping that through this foundational uh, grant that we have, uh, in partnership with the University of Washington, we'll be able to have our own big material science um, uh, uh, initiative that we have more and more researchers at University of Hawaii that can um, be able to also partner with uh, with the industry to create uh, new materials that are more uh, are more relevant to the needs of uh, uh, Hawaii. So. I will take you a little bit, um, I'll, I'll get more into what this grant is about. So our, 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 our project or grant is focused on uh, research and education in material science, but the biggest component of it or the key part of it is to involve underrepresented uh, minorities in uh, science um, or in material science. And our focus here at uh, University of Hawaii right now on this grant is to have more women come into material science, have more native Hawaiians participate in material science, have more Pacific Islanders participate in uh, material science. We want to build the next workforce, you know, relevant for material science here in Hawaii. And we can only do that by ensuring that the students here in Hawaii that wants to stay here in Hawaii gain the skills that are necessary to, um, to follow the, uh, this career pathway. So, so our vision really is to increase participation by inter-represented uh, groups. Um, through creating a pathway that recruits and retains these participants, because it's not just enough to bring them into our uh, uh, projects or our consortium to do research. We also want to make sure that the students that do research with us ends up graduating, and some of them are, ends up going to graduate school uh, in places like University of Washington. So we have um, a, a framework that we have established that ensures this would happen. So I will say this, you know, um, in short, you know, in the interest of time. So one of the things, the key thing is we have the students perform laboratory research and being mentored by researchers, you know, like Dr. Shemik Dera and researchers, you know, at University of uh, Washington. So they get dual mentoring. So not only are they benefiting from the researchers here at University of Hawaii, they're also getting mentored by University of Washington researchers. And the other key thing that we have is that the students that are part of this program will go to University of Washington to perform their research in summer. So they get also hands-on experience at this big 
research center that the University of Washington is. It's really world-class uh, material science uh, research uh, center. And besides that, we are also having, um, uh, so we are also developing curriculums with, in collaboration with the University of Washington. What I mean by that is we are developing core teaching materials. Because here at the University of Hawaii, we are beginning, we are at the throes of trying to develop material science. So we can learn a lot by, um, by, by leveraging the, the things that uh, University of Washington has already established. You know, why learn from your own mistakes when you can learn you know, from the mistakes that others already made and you know, they've perfected the process. So there's a lot of things that we can learn from uh, University of Washington in terms of having newer classes for material science that we can teach here. Like right now, we're starting in fall, we are going to be teaching a material science um, uh, class uh, that's have been developed through this uh, research grant. And we are also research and education grant. And we are also uh, trying to make sure that um, the students that are part of this program can have pre-admittance to University of Washington programs if they so decide to go to do graduate school there because the professors would already know them. And in most of the times when you go to graduate school, it's, it's through the relationships that you develop with the, with the, uh, prof, uh, the graduate professor. So if they already know you and you already has shown you meet the minimum requirements for the university, it makes it easy for you to get uh, admitted as a student. So we are trying to remove most of the drawbacks that um, uh, underrepresented students face, you know, in terms of uh, GRE scores, we are trying to make sure that can be waived because some of the students don't have the money to pay for the GRE scores. So if they've already published a paper with uh, some authors uh, uh, in the, in our um, uh, consortium, then, you know, that could substitute for that, for those GRE scores. So these are some of the things that we are trying to uh, uh, work, uh, work out. And um, the, but I think, you know, Shemi could probably, Dr. Dara will probably talk more about the research uh, component. I think at this point, uh, I would, uh, would like to, you know, to move on to him. So, Godwin, this is, we, we talk in this office about workforce development. Sounds like you people are all about student force development. And they will eventually, when they graduate, become part of a highly educated and well-paid uh, workforce. Anything specific uh, to Hawaii, or is this still a very general course? And then the graduates will move on to Washington. Any any Hawaii specific components that you've uh, thought about yet? And may maybe yes. that's a question for Faye. You're on mute, Faye. Yeah. So actually, I think um, Dr. Dara we'll talk about some of the research that's specific okay. to Hawaii. And I think that will help answer that question. Okay, I can try. So let me, if we could uh, show slide number four. I, I think uh, Godwin has provided uh, a very nice uh, introduction to, to this uh, specific collaboration that, that uh, we wanted to present to you uh, that focuses on material science. So just to define what material science is, because it's a term used in academic environment at universities and, and normal people probably don't, don't know specifically what it means. So material science is a science of uh, smart materials, better materials that perform in technological environments, in industry, in our homes better. If you look at your cell phone and compare how cell phones look 20 years ago or 15 years ago, they are much smaller, much smarter. They have much more memory, much faster. So all of this comes because materials of which the phones are made are better. We learn how these materials work, how they are built on atomic scales, how atoms are connected and what it means in terms of electrical conductivity and being able to transmit Wi-Fi signal and so on. And uh, based on this knowledge, we try to design, engineer new materials that perform better. So this slide shows, uh, slide number four shows this uh, um, tetrahedron, four components of material science, where we try to link uh, the structure of a material, the, the chemical composition, bonding, and so on, with 
properties, with how it behaves in certain conditions in response to certain stimuli, with performance, so how well a device using this material would work, and with processing, so how we can uh, change this material, form it to, to whatever, um, uh, whatever form it needs to assume in, in our uh, device. So this is uh, kind of uh, what we have in mind. It's material science is a very multidisciplinary uh, field. It requires ability to uh, characterize samples of many different forms, to synthesize them, synthesize with modifications once you know what makes it perform better, and then test in, in real applications. Could we go to uh, slide number five, please? Um, so um, we are starting small with this project. We selected uh, four examples of uh, um, of scientific challenges that we think all link to Hawaiian uh, economy in some way. We work on uh, photovoltaics, materials for improved solar panels. We work on uh, materials for hydrogen storage that could be used in uh, fuel cell cars. Uh, we work on uh, materials where structural defects, imperfections can improve performance, for example, in electronics applications. That's, that's pretty much the, the portfolio. The, the one example which I have in this illustration is an example of ionic liquids. This is a, a collaborate, this is a Godwin's baby, a collaboration that we developed together over the last couple of years. So ionic liquids is a, a special class of chemicals where you mix several components, all of which possess a uh, uh, ionic charge or like electrical charge. And because of this uh, structure, because of this makeup, these materials have uh, very special properties. Uh, they are selective absorbers, which means that if you want to remove some poisonous component from an environment, some contaminant, you can use these as biodegradable, biosafe uh, um, absorbers. If you had some gas that you wanted to remove from, uh, you know, uh, from a chimney of a factory that, that produces uh, contamination of uh, atmosphere, you could use uh, these materials. And there's many, many other applications. They're used in batteries uh, as improved electrolytes and so on. Um, so, so this is a class of, uh, of these smart materials, modern materials that have multiple uh, applications and improving them, setting some goals in terms of how we want to make them perform better, what we want to achieve, allows us to apply this in the framework of this materials design and, and optimization. Can we go to the next slide, please? So this kind of shows you this uh, feedback loop that we are trying to create. So we have uh, people who specialize in synthesizing these materials and Godwin is here, the, the father of uh, ionic liquids at the University of Hawaii. Uh, who um, can take materials that we know already perform well. Uh, we try to uh, synthesize these materials in a form that allows us to uh, perform this very exact uh, structural characterization and understand how this, uh, these chemical and physical properties that uh, control the performance, how they work. We use computer modeling, and this is something that University of Washington is helping us with. They have a very uh, well-established center that performs modeling of material uh, structure and properties. And we take all of this information together, make a new uh, synthetic recipe, and hopefully come up with a much improved ionic liquid that will uh, be 10 times more selective or, or 10, 10 times better performing in some other way. So again, we try to apply this, uh, this general framework, general flow of information to uh, multiple projects that we all we hope all are relevant to Hawaii's future, mostly in, in energy sector. So this would be, again, photovoltaics, uh, hydrogen storage, and uh, cleaning up the environment. We, we live on this beautiful uh, small island that doesn't have too many natural resources. But I think there are these ways in which we can be smart about utilizing what we have, being clean about our existence, not, not poison the environment. And uh, just uh, you know, develop uh, de develop an environment in which other people living in other places uh, would want to come here and uh, and conduct their business, perhaps uh, small scale manufacturing. And does that call for a segue to Fay then? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, all, all of this is dependent on our ability to train the you know future workforce that that would be able to carry this out. We are teachers at the university. We do some research in our labs, but this would need, need really be done uh, you know in small business or or uh, by by people that we train who advance to uh, to work in uh, 
in industrial settings. Yeah, so can we bring up that slide um, that had the uh, yellow triangle earlier? There you go, thanks so much. So I wanted to kind of um, clarify and then just maybe sh strengthen, reiterate what Godwin was sharing about earlier about our educational component of this project. And so our big goal and what the big goal that UH is to actually develop a material science pathway for students to be able to go and get their degree and then go on to grad school here at UH or at U UW or other places in order to pursue career. But right now we had the funding to be able to start our recruitment and retention efforts toward that end. And so um, in terms of re recruitment, you know, because material science is not as well known in Hawaii, we want to raise awareness, first of all, around, generally in our community, but particularly with the, um, the audiences that, that Godwin mentioned. So that would be Pacific Islanders, Native Hawaiians, and women. Um, and then, of course, K-12 students. Those will be the students that are coming into the university in a few years. So we're working with the University of Hawaii, various campus organizations to get the word out. We're getting, we're working with Kamehameha schools in order to reach more Native Hawaiian high school students. And then in our retention, we're really focusing on mentoring and exchange. And so I wanna to go to the next slide and talk about that. And that one um, is about our research experience. And so the kind of our big effort with this grant is to create these paid undergraduate research experiences for students. And so we designed it around this acronym MORE, M-O-R-E. And it's really about giving students more from their UH experience, expanding them beyond their discipline because, in, because material science is so interdisciplinary and also giving them the experience outside of even our university by working with University of Washington. So um, we start with M, which is mentoring. And that's really about our students working directly with the faculty and really having the faculty help them achieve their goals and pursue their interests. And then Ohana, so as Godwin mentioned, there are these students, um, there are these faculty that have been working together for years now and have really tried to build this pathway and also advance material science in Hawaii. And so, you know, I'm relatively new to this group and, um, and being a non-laboratory science person, being from the education field, it's been, um, you know, a little interesting for me to get involved. I don't always know what they're talking about, but I have to say everyone's been really welcoming, um, approachable, down to earth. They really are very passionate about student success and about um, the, the science. And so, you know, you'll be definitely in good hands if you know of students or um, folks who wanna get involved in this project. And then students are also gonna be able to be involved with their own student cohorts. So they get to know students from other disciplines or other parts of the university. And then our research experience. So that again is this paid undergraduate research experience, um, 10 to 20 hours a week in the lab, working with state-of-the-art equipment, working on these um, research projects that the UH and UW faculty have been um, starting to work on together. And so it's really um, a great way to for our two universities to build synergy and then to get the students involved and then give them these various you know, life experiences and research experiences. And then lastly, the exchange, E. And this is really a chance for students to, you know, be able to not just meet faculty from another university and students from another university, but to even possibly work in their labs, go there, um, you know, and that's just a really big um, opportunity for some of these students who may have been born and raised here and not haven't um, had the chance to work um, outside of Hawaii. So we're really excited about this opportunity. Um, next slide. So the thing that I wanted to share about um, next is actually our students, because, you know, I wanted to show folks how diverse these students are and how exciting their, um, their goals and aspirations are in being able to, um, and how this project helps meet those, those goals. So um, our first student is Emily. She's from Colorado, and she um, is studying biological sciences. She actually joined this program because she wants to one day get her master's in either biological or environmental conservation. And she one day hopes to be a Nat Geo explorer. So, you know, really interesting young lady. Um, we have Isabel, who's originally from Kauai, and she's um, from mechanical engineering, and she's um, passionate about sustainability. So this project helps her really fulfill a part of her passion being at UH. 
we have Tracy, who's our chemistry major from Honolulu, and she is interested in one day doing her own research and conducting her own research. And so she really sees this opportunity as a way to learn more about, you know, how to run a lab, how to um, gain better communication skills, how to be more self-directed. So she's interested in not only the lab skills, but some of the life skills as well. And then we have Shelby, who is our math major, and she's a former UH um, dance team member who took a class in solid state physics, and it just opened her world to material sciences. She um, has started working in a lab previous to this on carbon, developing carbon nanofoams, and now she wants to learn about inorganic materials and work with Dr. Dara. So, you know, these students are coming in with all different life experiences and goals. And I hope that, you know, they'll be able to really achieve and get more out of their UH experience using, you know, going through this program. And so if you folks out there know of students who would be a good fit for this program, particularly if they're, you know, from a native Hawaiian Pacific Islander or, or, for, or women, um, please send them our way. And we have a website to check out and it, our um, address is go.hawaii.edu slash capital D, capital X, or capital Y, capital P. So um, please go and check that out. Wow. Wow, inspiring stuff, Faye. You know, U, UH is generally has, it has strengths, tropical agriculture, astronomy, marine life, ocean sciences, and of course, NREL, but you are opening up a whole new prospect here. And you guys are, you, you each have your own unique talents and uh, Lord knows what good stuff is, is gonna come out of this. We've just got a few more minutes, one or two. Who wants to say a last word of wisdom here? This, this is really inspiring stuff. Thank you, Presmec, for bringing these two wonderful people together here. So if I could just say a few words, uh, I think you're, you're very right. Uh, for us, working at the university is an extremely rewarding uh, job. It's like doing your hobby every day for, you know, uh, for, for, to, to support your life. And, and working with students is, is something that is at, at the heart of everybody uh, employed by a university. So trying to create some, some positive pathway for, for these students in the future so they could, uh, you know, find new uh, work settings, new uh, job opportunities, and, and learn something that will uh, help them shape their futures. I think that's that's uh, really something that we strive to do. And uh, um, I, I think it would be important to uh, to thank people who are part of this collaboration but weren't able to to be with us here. So people who uh, run this material science center at the University of Washington, the director uh, David Gamelin and. Uh, the associate director Xiao Song Li, uh, they were extremely helpful in uh, help, you know, making us able to put together this funding proposal and getting the, the money. And then our colleagues who uh, couldn't join us today for the interview and are also faculty members of this project, uh, Hope Ishii and uh, Nico Gayard and uh, Joe Brown. Hmm. Hmm. Godwin, Faye, any last, last minutes or uh, moments of, of wisdom here? Well, yeah, you know, it's seventy come in theory, so, but I would like to thank the world, you know. <laughs> thank you, Howard, for, you know, uh, making, a, you know, for allowing us to come to our show and um, talk to you about uh, this opportunity that, uh, that we have. And uh, probably, I'm sure in the future, you know, um, I talked to Dr. Dara earlier, we might you know, uh, to try to bring the students um, that are part of this program. Uh, we have, uh, we, this project has only been six months old so far. So uh, probably within the next six months, we'll, we'll try to bring them and they can talk about the research uh, that uh, they are beautiful. doing. Yeah. Yeah, and this program is archived. It'll be probably archived late this afternoon. And I put in key words like uh, material science. So people, if they do material science away, boom, this program is going to come up. And don't be surprised if you uh, get, get some inquiries down the road. And on that very, very, very cheery note, I thank Presnek, 
Godwin and Faye. This is a very inspiring program. This is Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii, February 28th, 2022. Thank you very much for all your inspiration, and we'll see you next time. <music>